Thank you. Madam Deputy Speaker, there is a saying that charity begins at home, and over the past few months we have witnessed extraordinary acts of charity and kindness across the United Kingdom. Confronted by coronavirus, people have volunteered to help their neighbours who are shielding, they have donated to food banks to help the hungry, they have contributed to appeals raising funds. We have truly seen the best of British. But charity does not end at home. Our help is not just needed here. It is needed in other countries and on other continents, and perhaps nowhere more so than in Africa. And that is why I wholeheartedly support the measures before us today and speak specifically to those affecting the African Development Bank. The bank is, as we have heard, an important player in African nations' development and, crucially, in the reduction of poverty. Right now, there is a pressing need for the bank to help African countries cope with coronavirus. Many of them do not have the resilience that exists here in the UK. A considerable number have to cope with malaria. Congo is tackling an outbreak of Ebola. There are fears that COVID-19 could lead to a wider food and health crisis and deep concerns of lasting damage to economies that are already fragile. And while there has undoubtedly been considerable progress in economic development over the last 10 years or so, there is a real risk of that being undone. The African Development Bank is being called on to ensure that that does not happen and to provide immediate help in many parts of the continent. And this underlines the role that the African Development Bank has built in recent years. It's High Five initiative focusing on providing infrastructure through prioritising the needs that are most pressing across the continent, sanitation and water, energy transport, finance and agriculture. These are ultimately all about enabling and equipping the people of Africa to improve their own lives. The UK's contribution to the replenishment of the African Development Fund will undoubtedly have a marked beneficial impact on objectives of inclusive and green growth. The greater focus on climate and gender in designing projects that has been agreed as part of this replenishment are to me extremely welcome reforms to the bank. And I'm also pleased to see a commitment to speedier delivery of project funds. Similarly, it is encouraging to see that approximately £100 million is dependent on a positive mid-term review, underlining the need for contributions from the UK to be based on effective performance. And I look forward to hearing more from the Minister about how that might be assessed. With regard to the instrument on further payment to capital stock, I think it's worth highlighting the beneficial impact that a relatively modest immediate payment for shares brings, as the increased capital stock then enables the bank to leverage its balance sheet on the capital markets to mobilise private sector financing for projects. So it's not simply a matter of giving money, it's a matter of demonstrating confidence and thus building even greater capability. The instrument regarding the Multilateral Debt Relief Initiative honours our commitment to cancelling the debt of some of the very poorest nations in the world, and I fervently hope that the UK's financial assistance to the African Development Fund will make a material difference to the ability of those countries to tackle poverty and develop economically now that the burden of man unmanageable debt has been relieved. Now, Madam Deputy Speaker, whilst the UK shareholding in the African Development Bank is relatively small, I know from conversations with uh, senior members of staff at the bank that we are seen as a very important stakeholder, and our commitment at this time sends a strong me message to other shareholders and donor nations, and that is surely welcome. Now, Ma Madam Deputy Speaker, one reason I was particularly keen to speak on the African Development Bank is because among multilateral development banks, it has a unique position. It is headquartered and based in Africa. It has teams on the ground who really understand African nations and who can interact with governments to help both public finance management and governance. With technical as well as financial expertise, the bank therefore is able to help mobilise resources and improve capacity so that countries can then reduce their very dependence on donor funding. The instruments today provide a reminder, Madam Deputy Speaker, of the potential for the UK and African nations to forge closer and stronger relations, especially as we leave the transition period following our departure from the EU. Our historical relationship, and in the case of many African countries, shared membership of the Commonwealth, also provides opportunities. As the President of the African Development Bank himself said on a visit to London in January, as wealth grows in Africa, it leads to wealth growth in the UK. He pointed out that our strong trading and cultural ties give British investors a head start in Africa, whereas he put it, there are huge markets brimming with enormous investment opportunities. 
It is perhaps therefore something of a pity that foreign direct investment from the UK to Africa has in fact fallen by a third since 2015, but I hope that the Government's commitment to the African Development Bank, as demonstrated by this new funding, will provide at least a nudge to investors to consider the potential for imaginative and bold action that could bring mutual benefit. Madam Deputy Speaker, it is important that the British taxpayer has confidence that the money devoted to development is being spent wisely and carefully. There have been too many cases in the past of waste, profligacy and worse. Wherever our development funds are sent, there must be thorough auditing of projects and robust analysis of their real-world impact on the people in greatest need. Will give way? I will. I am most grateful to him for giving way. Well, does he agree with me that the prime way of ensuring that there is really good value for money, apart from all the structures that have been put in place, is the Independent Commission on Aid Impact, the ICAI, set up by the Coalition Government in 2010. It is the taxpayer's friend. It is independent of government. It reports not to the executive or to uh, the ministry, but to parliament and, at the moment, to the select committee, indeed a subcommittee of the select committee. Does he agree that it is very important, for precisely the purpose he set out, that the ICAI should be retained in full? I, I do indeed, and I, I take the point that my, that my right honourable friend makes. I was going to, to mention that I, I am indeed pleased that the Independent Commission for Aid Impact is currently conducting a review into the effectiveness of DFID support for the African Development Group. It is perhaps a pity that it hasn't been able to report um, before the decision is being taken today, but that I think is understandable uh, given the limitations caused by coronavirus. But as a general principle, uh, it surely makes a lot of sense to have that independent scrutiny that my right honourable friend refers to. And I think additional scrutiny of how we spend development money is, is inevitable, as here in the UK we confront the worst recession we have known. It will be vital to demonstrate how supporting development initiatives is beneficial to us all. And I feel confident that ministers will be ensuring that is the case with the monies being discussed here this afternoon. Afternoon, and the Minister may even wish to provide me with some reassurance on that uh, momentarily. Uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, it is right that even in difficult economic times at home, we continue to support those elsewhere who are much worse off. These funds for the African Development Bank and those for the International Development Association of the World Bank illustrate how Britain can be a force for good by making solid financial and political commitments that contribute towards economic development and social progress around the globe.